Well, you know, um, you were there from the beginning, obviously, and his legs under him, no, no pun intended, literally, uh, and is able to really be a part of this team and, uh, and, and, and really contribute at a high level. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun to, to, to see where he's come from and to see where he's gone and see what else happens next. But, you know, kind of to echo what Bree said, we've had a great time this whole time uh, being together and, you know, having the downy lunches that we have uh, that he's put together and, and to get to know these people, um, I've, al I've always known their work, but to get to, to know them as individuals and get to know them as people and get to be friends and to come back, to get to keep coming back to these relationships again and seeing where everybody is and people that had kids and fam kids going on to college and other people having kids and relationships started and ending. It's just, it's, it's rare to have that kind of an experience over the course of, of 10 years with the same group of people, so it's really nice. That leads us to uh, Mark Ruffalo. Uh, this cast has met up uh, many times now, uh, either in part or whole. Some describe it as family. Uh, is that how it feels to you? And, and why is that, or is that not the case? It doesn't feel like family to me because we all really get along well. <laughs> <laughs> There's not that much drama. Um, no, it does feel like family. It's a family that you wish you had. You know, as actors, we're, we're like vagabonds. We, 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 we kind of bounce around. We, 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 we have these intense relationships, and then you don't see anybody until you get nominated for something, or you're nominated in something, and you end up in an award ceremony. What's that like? Speak for yourself. All right, let's go to some questions. Uh, for the Russos, <laughs> um, you guys have shown amazing restraint in what you haven't revealed about this film so far. How did not having sort of feedback to trailers and major set pieces, how did that affect you putting the film together and putting its final touches on without sort of having that, that audience feedback coming from trailers that show more of the film? We, look, at the end of the day, my brother and I, we came to this material because we're, we're fans. We grew up loving the comics. We came to the series, we came to the MCU already fans of the, uh, of the MCU. Um, so the thing that like the energy we move on is our own passion and our own excitement and that's how we tell stories we learned long ago that you have to tell stories for yourself you can't be thinking about um, how others might receive them so for Joe and I because because we have such an intimate relationship with the material because we have so many amazing collaborators starting with Kevin um, we are able to just really fashion the story around what we want to see as fans. How do we surprise ourselves? How do we excite ourselves? How do we challenge ourselves? Um, how do we force ourselves to, to dig, keep digging deeper and keep exploring this narrative and these characters in ways we never imagined? Um, that's, that's, sort of, that's how we guide ourselves through the process. And while once, we're, once the film is complete and we put it out in the world, we've, we really have no idea how it's gonna be received. You know, and then sort of at, once that complete film is experienced and digested and responded to, I think that's the moment where we are then filled up with a reaction. Um, but as we're executing, once we, once we conceive the film and start executing, we're not really second guessing what we're doing. We're really focused on chasing, that, chasing the initial vision that we had for it. Absolute honor to be across from all of you. Um, obviously with the end of Infinity War and the Thanos snap is a very emotional thing for a lot of audience members to experience that. And Robert, I've been wanting to ask you this since I saw that film and specifically just staying with Infinity War, um, shooting that moment with Spider-Man, um, having him turn to dust and the actual acting and the emotion of that moment, um, just what it was like to shoot that scene specifically on that day. And for each of you, uh, do you have a, a particular person who turned to dust that was the more most emotional for you to watch as an actor? But Robert, for you first. It's one of those things where you go like, wow, I think we just made a pretty uh, serious choice here. <laughs> and uh, But I think audiences like that. I, I think audiences are, 
so smart and now so uh, they require to not be fed the same drivel as even 20 minutes ago. It's like we, we need novelty. And I think that what the Russos and Kevin have been able to do is provide that in spades. Hi, this question is for Chris Evans. So in the past few films like Civil War and uh, Infinity War, now Endgame, you see your character being able to interact with different characters. And because you know, you're Captain America, you always have this tendency to be a leader and be a captain. How does that change or maintain continuity as you meet other characters like Captain Marvel or Black Panther who are both leaders in their own way? Sure, I, I think he, he tends to lean on those people who are of like mind and nature, who, who kind of are uh, intrinsically self selfless, you know? I mean, I mean, all the heroes up here have their baked in the cake flaws, and I think a lot of that makes for really good conflict and storytelling. That's why my favorite stuff in this arc has been my stuff with Downey, because we are such, uh, it's, it's such a dichotomy between how we, we approach things, but at the end of the day, we, our hearts are both in the right places. But it, provides a lot of great friction. Um, but, but introducing characters like Captain Marvel and like Black Panther, people who also kind of align very similarly to, to Cap's nature, um, I think it, it creates a nice, uh, it, it reinforces Cap's sense of uh, purpose and home. You know, it's an environment that it feels more, more natural for him. So I think it's, it's nice to see the certain pockets where he feels at peace and the certain pockets where he feels, you know, his buttons might be getting pushed. Um, this question is for Anthony and Joe. So I'm 12 years old, and I often make short films with my friends. I aspire to be a director when I grow up. What skills do you think it takes to direct a, an amazing movie like Avengers Endgame? Yeah. 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 For you. That's, That's a great an question. awesome question. First of all, congratulations, because you're st you've started making films more than 10 years before we did. So that, that's very impressive. Um, uh, I think you know what it's. It's. Uh, we love your initiative, and I think that that's really when, when anybody asks us about getting started, it's doing what you're doing. It's it's picking up a camera and it's shooting. You have iPhones now. You can, you know, Steven Soderbergh just shot an entire movie on an iPhone, and you can you have free distribution on YouTube, and you can put things out there. We, you know, discovered Donald Glover for Community on YouTube. So there's a you know there, there's a there's it's much easier now, I think, for uh, for people's voices uh, uh, to be heard and seen than it was when we started, and you had to go out and get a camera and buy a really expensive film and figure out how to get it developed. And um, uh, so I think you know, find a story that you want to tell, be really passionate about it, care about it, and then and then and then go out and tell that story. And I think that's really the 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 secret to um, to um, um, you know being a successful filmmaker. Please join me in thanking the cast and filmmakers of Avengers Endgame. And thank you, John.